Hi, you just saw me. I'm Sim Guru George. Thank you guys so much for joining our developer panel uh, today. Um, I've got um, a number of different developers from the Maxis Studio who've worked here for a long time, for a short time. Either way, they've got lots of great stories. We're going to explore a little bit about um, what they do in their daily jobs, what makes them tick, how they got to where they are, um, and Hopefully you guys will find in your hearts to uh, do some donating, uh, participate in our Extra Life charity, stick around, um, call some friends in. I think this is a really fun event. So um, yeah, I won't be watching chat too closely, but I'll glance over a couple times. Maybe there's some good questions from the audience that I could pull in as well. So with that, welcome to my panel. Yay. Oh, here, let me actually put up text. <laughs> So um, really quickly, I'm going to go through and I'm going to let these fine folks introduce themselves. Um, and since Clint, you are in the top left, would you like to introduce yourself, Mr. Clint Primley? Clint, one second. Um, I'm sorry, but I uh, they don't have audio from you, so I'm going to ask you to repeat that in just a second. Um, I think what ha happened is I chose the wrong audio. Anyways. Does it? Okay. <laughs> let me know when I'm good. So everybody, we just missed uh, Clint's fabulous intro, so I'm going to let him uh, go that, and he'll explain why everyone's just laughing at him. Okay. Uh, my name is Clint Primley. I am a character artist on TS4. Um, my little foster dog just uh, peed on the rug over my left shoulder, um, if any of you caught that. Um, I'll clean it later. The, uh, I've been in Maxis for about f almost 15 years, I think. Um, it's been a really long time, and I love it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, and next down the line is uh, the fabulous Jessica Croft, who you may know as SimGuru Jessica, right? Yeah, that's me. Hey, folks. I'm SimGuru Jessica. Uh, I'm a senior game designer here at Maxis. I'm also the lead uh, game designer on uh, High School Years, which just recently released. Hopefully everyone enjoyed that. I've been in the industry now how long? I don't remember. Uh, 11 years? That's a guess. I've been at Maxis for three years now. Uh, previously, I was working on other games like uh, Good Wars 2 on ArenaNet. Cool. And uh, next, uh, the woman with the fabulous owl mug who will steal owl of our hearts, uh, Joanna Leo. You guys didn't get Hello, dad jokes name. all stream long, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's Skuma who's deciding to hang out with me even though she never wants to hang out <laughs> uh, my name is joanna i'm a producer i oversee pack development um i've been with maxis for 18 years and i also very much love it <laughs> all right and next down we have maria hey can you guys hear me all right i'm just checking <laughs> perfect yeah you know never goes to check uh, hi, I'm Maria, and I am a 3D animator uh, at The Sims. And I have been here this wonderful team for probably two years. Yeah, and it's been fun. It's been exciting. Loving it so much. All right. And Maria, you are a return panelist, and with you is Catherine, who's also a return panelist, correct? Who is muted right now? Tell me something. Testing? Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my bad. You got there. <laughs> Bringing out as we go. Um, Rihanna actually started uh, like right around the same time. Like she started, I think, like a week or two before I did. So we've been like in it together. We were newbies, and now we're getting into. Yeah, we know our, we're getting to know our stuff. Um, but I'm also so I'm also an animator. My name is Catherine Peterson, and uh, I guess the, the the latest pack that I uh, shipped was Werewolves. That was, that was very fun. Fantastic. All right, and last but definitely not least, Mariana. Hello, uh, my name is Mariana. I am a game designer on TS4, and I have been on the team for a little more than two years. Uh, it has been fun. 
All right. Now, um, really quickly, uh, before we go off into the questions, um, are any of you streaming today? Would you like to plug any of your Extra Life streams? I think, Jessica, you're streaming, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure when, but I'll be streaming on uh, twitch.tv slash pashblue. That's P-A-S-C-H-B-L-U-E. I think the plan right now is um, some of us will be playing Project Zomboid, and a bunch of the dev team has never played Project Zomboid. So the carnage will ensue. There will be much screaming and horror and death, I'm sure. I'll try and lead us to glorious victory, though. I've played a lot of, a lot of Zomboid in my day. All right. Well, I'm going to take us through a number of questions. Um, I know there's a couple things to show off, so if you want to show off any of the stuff that you've pinged, go ahead and just let me know, and I will switch to that. But other than that, let's get into the questions. Um, so let's start off. I know you guys all introduced your um, career and what you did. Could you guys give maybe a one or two sentence, like what you do um, over the course of a pack? Um, and I will just randomly go from the bottom up since we started or ended with Mariana. Let's start with you. Me? Uh, yeah. So as a game designer, uh, I mean, the way that I explain it to my grandma is like, grandma, imagine a game of chess. Uh, you know, you have the position, the pieces, you have what each piece does. That's the job of a game designer to define in a game, right? Uh, but for CS4, that means that is a very broad scope because CS4 has a very broad scope as a game. Uh, so during the development process, uh, we start by like brainstorming features and like defining goals for them, uh, writing documentation about what those features are gonna be, uh, talking with other disciplines, making sure that we have everything we need, every, everyone's uh, on the same page. And then when we go into production, we kind of put everything together that the other like disciplines give us. Uh, and then we try to make sure we are hitting our experience goals. Uh, I think that's how I would describe it in a very high level. All right. Well, I don't know where Clint went, but Jessica, you're also a designer. Would you like to jump in? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, um, my role functionally is a little bit different since uh, I'm a pack lead. Um, but uh, at a pack lead level, uh, it's very much about uh, about trying to drive ideation towards a vision. Um, I know that sounds super in the clouds, but what that really means is identifying what a theme of a pack is and then like how we might best achieve that. And then also trying to solicit the team to get to the best path forward based on everyone's expertise and interests. It's also a lot of research talking with brand and uh, our research partners to better understand uh, how we might best uh, satisfy players' wants. This is looking at things like, like the forums, looking at things like the players have asked for. I, I know sometimes there's thoughts so of where do you get your ideas? Well, it's it's from players. Like we, we do very heavily try and source our our core concepts from what players are actually asking for. And then beyond that, it's more um, it's more high level research uh, for uh, high school years in particular. Uh, there's a huge research beat um, talking with actual Gen Z folks to understand what Gen Z is interested in. There's 21 hours of uh, interviews we did with uh, Gen Z um, teens all, all across the spectrum of age. And uh, I, I'm I'm getting close to 40, uh, I'm 38. So like, I'm, I'm not a teenager. So like that kind of research is, is really important for us, for us to be authentic. And then it varies from pack to pack what that research actually is. So that rule changes quite a bit depending on what the actual topic is. And then beyond that, um, leads are also responsible for overseeing designs and just giving feedback and just making sure the team is all united and excited and working towards the same method of getting to that vision. I could talk about this for a very long time, so I'm going to stop there. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot <laughs> that goes on. All right. Uh, and then we'll just go to your right. Uh, Joanna, um, wh what do you do? Glad, I'm glad that Clint was victorious in whatever he accomplished. <laughs> Uh, let's see, as a lead producer, I uh, am working with the other leads primarily to make sure we're all rowing in the same direction. So there's a lot of ideation early on and uh, figuring out what we're going to do and then scoping, scoping so much fun that makes sure that to ensure that we have the, the most essential features and um, 
we get it done in a way that's sane for our whole team. Um, later on in the production phase, we're just getting it done and making sure it's at quality, figuring out what else we need to squeeze into the game um, and get it out there. So we tie all the pieces together. All right. Well, then let's uh, toss it over to our animators. Uh, Catherine, would you like to kick it off? What do you do? Sure. Um, so for animation, uh, typically we, when we get started on a pack, we'll have to kind of plan out uh, what exactly animation is going to uh, need to make for that pack, like which interaction is going to need what, and how we're going to hook it up and implement it in game. So it's a lot of preparation early on and like playing the field to hopefully have like a successful and smooth production period. So, and then after that, we just get to do all the fun animating time. And then after that, we get to do also super fun uh, clip testing and everything in game and see everything hopefully working in games <laughs> with a few bugs. So yeah, it's super okay. fun. Maria, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Fantastic. Oh, and Clint, um, I let everybody know you had to go clean things up, but welcome back. Uh, give us a little bit, um, a little more detail about what you do. <laughs> I think uh, Maria is muted for that last one, so uh, I'll let her explain again if she'd like to. You're still Wait, muted. No, I, no I, I hear her. Yeah, interestingly, I don't hear anything either. Yeah, I don't. Huh. Duh. Oh, that's is funny. In, I hear her. Is it in Discord? He might yeah, be I muted hear. on um, the actual Twitch, but not on our back end. No, you're muted in Discord. It, it says your mic's on. Uh, is it better now? I've unmuted yeah. myself. OK, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was, I was trying to fix <laughs> some of the audio settings. And now my video is acting up weird. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess this is, yeah, this is. Uh... The fun, the fun times of being a streamer. Nothing goes right ever. <laughs> but yeah, what I was saying that uh, shooting reference is one of the most uh, fun things uh, what animators usually do <laughs> because they can get as creative with reference uh, as uh, they are and yeah, share just as much ideas as possible for yeah for the lead to decide which animation is going to look the best uh, uh, in the game. And now it's also back to Clint. Okay, now it's my turn. I uh, make um, cast items. So all the clothing, hair, beards, eye colors, eyebrows, uh, accessories, uh, all of those. Um, yeah, we will typically take stuff from uh, the concept artists, the, the, the paintings that they've made uh, that fit the style of a pack. And we will translate those into 3D and hook them up so that they run in game. All right. So now that we've um, isolated who the audience should ping for requests, uh, let's go into a little bit more about... You guys have all talked about how long you've worked on The Sims 4. I have a question for you, though. Um, what was the first game that you worked on that was published? Anyone like to volunteer and take this? Uh, I, I, I got an interesting one. Uh, I can take it. Um, I got my start in uh, quality assurance, as a lot of uh, game devs actually do, uh, and it was on uh, Viva Pinata Party Animals, which is not mainline Viva Pinata. If you're familiar with Viva Pinata, it's actually a um, uh, it's a multiplayer party game, kart racer mini game thing that spun off of that. So a very illustrious start, but that that that's where I, I that's where I cut my teeth initially. So. Yeah. If anyone actually played that, that game needs more adjectives. Let me go and chat. <laughs> uh, we, I mean, it was during that era. It, it felt like every franchise was was making the kart racer spinoff. And I think like one of the things, the first game dev wisdoms I heard from a producer was, when you make a kart racer version of your franchise, the franchise is dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so worry if we ever make a Sims kart racer. <laughs> All right. Anyone else like to jump in? 
my first game was The Herbs, The Sims in the City, and I was an intern on that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of love for the herbs in the community. Yeah, it's it's really nice. It's very nice. Uh, Clint, what was the first thing you worked on? Uh, first game I worked on, George, might have actually been with you. Um, oh, it was SOCOM 3, yeah, uh, in QA at Sony. Yeah, I, uh, I have a lot of, a lot of good... A lot of memories from that one. <laughs> well, mem yeah, memories. <laughs> Leave it at memories. A lot of, a lot of memories. Um, I used to play some uh, games. Yeah. Maria, what was the first game you worked on? We actually both with Catherine, we worked on EP10, The Snowy Escape. And yeah, we animated the snowboards, the skis. <laughs> yeah, all of the... A lot of technical difficult tasks we had to do like right off the bat when we just started so yeah and i think during the, our previous stream uh we actually showed uh, a few references and a few animations which we did on that pack so yeah that was it nice well i think she covered you catherine but um mariana uh, sorry about that no no <laughs> take it away uh, i mean <laughs> Hmm. Uh, you want me to talk, George? Yeah, I was curious. What was your first title you've ever released? Uh, actually, it was student games. Uh, I worked on a few student games, both uh, a board game and a couple mobile games. And we released those in Android. Uh, in the, but bigger, actually, online studio released games. It was actually cottage living. Oh, so nice. pre pretty recent. All right. Well, uh, also fantastic. Uh, by the way, I loved all the chicken work. <laughs> what what, what uh, features on that did you work on, by the way? Um, cottage living? Uh, oh. I worked on canning recipes. I did a little bit work on different things. I worked on the trades, too. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's, uh, I worked on a little bit of different things, but those are the main things I worked on. All right. Um, so more about like uh, what you, how you guys worked in your development. What do you think would be the most surprising thing that the players would learn about what you do during development? What do you think they would be most surprised by? Um, Joan, I'm going to kick it off with you. What do you think? There's an embarrassingly large amount of time spent in spreadsheets, <laughs> spreadsheets <laughs> and presentations. So it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's where a lot of data lives. Yeah. How about you, Jessica? Oh boy. Um, I, I think, uh, a, a fun one is going to be, uh, how much time we actually spend trying to figure out the title of a pack. Uh, like I think. Uh, high school years, uh, I, I feel like I was in five hours or more of meetings just talking about the title of that. And, you know, um, you, you want to, like, understand the level of, um, I don't want to say pedantry, but, like, the level of semantics we got into. Uh, there was a, at least an hour discussion of whether or not it should be high school years or the high school years. And the conversation went, well, What's the difference? Well, the high school years kind of makes it sound like a sitcom. Is that the feel we're trying to go for? Or is it better to do high school years, which refers to a period of life? Does one speak better to the teen experience? Uh, yeah, like so much, so much time spent in the word the. So that that that's a fun thing I think players don't quite realize. Well, um, I'll, I'll second that. I remember going through 500 revisions of Eco Lifestyle, so. Yeah, 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 players are always like, why is it not eco living? It's like, well, there's reasons. Oh, there's reasons. <laughs> uh, Clint, you're next. Like, what do you think would be surprising? <laughs> More than one? What? For some reason... 
So, so. Oh, no, Clint is muted. They're, they're so saying Clint's you're muted. muted? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm muted again. Uh, okay, how's I really that? want to hear about the aprons, though. The aprons? Okay, yeah. Okay, Information well, people would be very surprised, I think, about how many aprons we've we've made uh, in character art. Um, every pack ships with, like, probably at least one, sometimes two. Um, and uh, you really wouldn't... You wouldn't think there'd be that, like, broad a variety of them, but there actually are. Uh, cooking, crafting, wood shop cleaning, that kind of stuff, you know, always more aprons. I think uh, this is making me realize I should have done an apron showcase right here so I could show those off. <laughs> next year. Um, next year, yeah. I'll, I'll work on that. Um, so, uh, Catherine, I'll start with you from animation. What do you, what do you think is the oh, most man. surprising thing players would learn? It's kind of embarrassing. Well, not really, because it's a, you know, it's a human. Well, this, okay, this is all about, like, you know, just l real life, right? So, like, real life right now, um, werewolves. Um, we had a lot of conversation about um, how Sims were going to mark their territory in the world. Because we're like, well, we've got masculine and feminine peeing. And I'm like, are we going to have masculine and feminine peeing, like, mark territory? Because you got, like, you know, so I, like, drew out a bunch of stick figures on my document i was like okay the standing with like the hands down or like the like full crouch are they on all fours is there a leg lifted you know like do we want a masculine feminine p do we want a universal p like how are we you know like what's our budget for time you know so i remember distinctly having like a, a meeting with my my lead and my animation director about like how these things are gonna be being in world and like, you know, then, you know, we were talking about like, well, how do dogs pee, you know, because werewolves are, you know, whatever, and like, you know, all this stuff. And so there's a lot of like, you know, effort put into this, this uh, peeing stuff. And I'm like, this is going to follow me with like the rest of my career. Like any, you know, I feel like any, anything, you know, going on in the future, that's going to, it's going to come on my shoulders, I bet. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> Well, to be honest, right now I'm picturing this conversation of Mariana talking to her grandmother and being like, hey, I'm working with my animation partner on this design. Let me show you what I do. And it being this complex diagram of werewolves peeing in different positions. Yeah, I maybe, maybe show not. Like, the, the like, different stick figures I made on that page of like, all the different peeing that options we could. And it, it was really funny. I was like, this is my life right now. This is, this is fun. <laughs> uh. <laughs> By the way, yeah. Clint, just so you know, you're getting requests to um, do uh, sexy apron variants for nighttime lingerie. Anyways, so one more that's, that's on my list. It's been on my list for a very long time. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really curious what reference you have to look at for all the PA animations. Yeah. Well, okay, luckily, okay, well, it's in, um, if you go on Twitter, uh, I didn't end up doing the reference for it. I, like, did, you know, my own at home, but I didn't film it because it's like, no. <laughs> but, um... John Simino, he's an animator on the team, and he did do reference of it, and he was brave enough to share it on Twitter, guys. These are the <laughs> animators. They love you so much. They have no shame. So go check it out. It's great. Yeah. All right. Um, to follow that amazing story, Mariana Maria, who would like to try and beat that? <laughs> uh, I'll try. It's probably, yeah, not as exciting, but still. <laughs> You, yeah, you wouldn't imagine how many cars I petted in order to shoot a reference for petting a cow, actually. <laughs> I was just going on the parking lot and I was petting different cars <laughs> because they were the right size. They were like about of a cow size and I just, yeah, needed some like <laughs> decent surface <laughs> where I could shoot a reference of myself, like petting an EP11 cow. So <laughs> people around me uh, people walking walking by me they were just looking at me the crazy person what is she doing she's like <laughs> hugging scratching and patting this like random car and talking to it <laughs> what is going on i would love uh, to be a passerby oh my gosh yeah <laughs> if you see people doing that on the street especially <laughs> yeah while filming themselves this is probably yeah it could be a tiktok trend maybe i don't know <laughs> But I'm there's just, a chance that this is an animator <laughs> performing just, his duties. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine how I'd react if I walked out to the parking lot and you were petting my car and talking to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to believe that like a defining characteristic uh, of any animator on The Sims is courage. 
Yeah. Honestly, yeah, probably. There's like a period, like a hump that you have to get over, like the whole like, oh, I'm killing myself doing stupid things, you know, and you know, it, yeah, there's definitely a hump, yeah. It's a yeah. combination of courage and lack of shame. Those two things right. together make a very good animator. I think Chad is picking exactly. up on this might just be a great get out of jail free card for any action you ever want to do in public. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I swear so it's for an animation. I just a message that you're allowed to show that reference if you want to, Maria, if you have the courage. Oh perfect. Yeah. Do you yeah, do you want to see how it actually looks like? <laughs> Uh, That's I, I would love to. Please, please show it. Okay, How about you? Actually... If, if you cue that up, I'll I'll hop over to Mariana, and then we'll come back and look at it. That's good. Mariana, any surprising elements of your job? I mean, there's all the very weird conversations uh, that just comes with you know. Uh, should we have evil chickens or not? Like, even if you're just in that meeting, it's like the stuff that comes up is like also like the conversations about the Yuhu locations. They always uh, very funny, but I also but I think that's all expected. Uh, one thing that I do end up doing a lot, I mean, because we have to write the text, right? Is it the the designers or the producers that write the text? Uh, I Google way too many times like puns involving X, puns involving jazz, puns involving canning, puns involving like cheese, like it, like I I just like you accumulate a knowledge of puns for by working on test four, which is very specific because if you can put a pun in a buff or an interaction name, we are gonna do it. Yeah, uh, I'm all there for the puns, and I swear, um, again, a lot of them are uh, dad humor fits right into that, so um, I will be your writing partner any day. <laughs> okay, Maria, do you have that uh, screen share up again? Or is that something you can yeah, share right now? Yeah, absolutely. I just need to... Okay. Let me know if, ooh, you can see. Oh, uh, I love video. this inception right now. <laughs> <laughs> we all need to like. <laughs> yeah. Oh my okay, let's see how it actually looks like. Yeah. I feel like I have to, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is, can I actually launch it? Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> this is how it looks like. Yeah. I will have to tell the truth. I didn't pet random cars. This is my car. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to so slice good. up the story a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> Wait, was it your car or somebody else's car? It's my car. It's my car. I just, I can't yeah. hear her. Oh, you cannot hear me? Um, interesting. Are you saying you can't hear the video or you can't hear Maria? Oh, I couldn't hear Maria. Maria's muted. Oh. Oh, interesting. I can hear her. Yeah. Oh no. Oh dear. I can hear you too. Well, uh, yeah, everyone. Can oh, it's just me then. It's just a Catherine problem. Hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know what I can do about that. But yeah. yeah. Chat can hear you. <laughs> yeah, this is. Okay, perfect. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is essentially how the animation process looks like. Uh, you're coming up with a reference uh, uh, for this specific animation I had to like look. A lot of adorable references of cows and how they're being pet and what, yeah, how are they acting that up? And then I had to, yeah, shoot myself <laughs> petting cars, of course, uh, in order to sell the acting, uh, yeah, how I see that. And I think I took like, I don't know, 10 takes of different ways of how I would pet this cow until uh, me and my leads uh, came to conclusion, which one is going to look the best. And this on the right is the blocking pass of how, like this is the first pass which I show to my lead. And after discussing with her, I started to add some polishing things, right? Like, yeah, I decided to, I don't know, uh, exaggerate the acting on the cow so it would look more affectionate. So it would look, yeah uh lean towards the same more which is which isn't on the original reference at all and i feel like this is the magic of animation when you can uh yeah make your imagination work and 
whatever <laughs> you want essentially so your creativity is your limit uh reference is a very very good starting point but uh you can always start imagining things and adding up on that so yeah never That's limit fantastic. yourself yeah. with just a reference i really <laughs> like the ear wag yeah <laughs> it really sells it that's very cool I feel like, and I'm uh, sure your car feels well loved too. Yes. <laughs> oh, and I, I just realized that. that. No, I, 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 again. People don't I see cannot, it. But... I cannot. Like, oh, you, they cannot see it. They cannot they, see, they see the, the cow up there. I moved your face so they can see the original oh. man behind the fence. Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, could not animate the tongue animation, but I feel like <laughs> yeah, the rest of the acting, especially the ears. <laughs> they sold out this uh yeah cow behaviors and it's just amazing that on the sims you can literally study all sorts of uh, animals uh, which are going to be in the pack and yeah discovering chicken references cow references and llama references that was just so much fun and so relaxing when you could just sit <laughs> and looking at the chicken videos or cow videos all day and you're doing it for your job. <laughs> you're not procrastinating, I swear. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is oh. for work. Okay. There we go. Thanks for sharing that. Of all right, let's get on some other questions. Well, here we go. So we've talked a lot about what you guys do and honestly, how fun these jobs really are. Um, and I know there's a lot of work and a lot of skills you guys have built up over the years. Um, could you guys give us a little insight into um, and maybe advice for someone who wants to be in this career? Like where do, like what led you to this career? What uh, schooling did you do? What skills did you learn? Anything you might want to toss out as advice or, or thoughts on that? Um, uh, Clint, let's start with you. Um, I am currently making video games because of Jurassic Park. Uh, really? When I, I I first saw that movie and I saw uh, real living dinosaurs on the screen and not stop motion stuff, um, uh, it just it it solidified something in my brain that I needed to know how that was done and I needed to do it. And so um, I went to a, uh, uh, basically a boot camp school. Uh, I went 14 months of computer animation, uh, 24 hours a day. Um, they let us sleep occasionally, but uh, like I had classes at like one in the morning and then starting again at nine. Um, uh, I only have an associate's degree because at the time, this was so long ago, uh, that they didn't have bachelor's degrees for, for computer animation yet, at least not at this school. And so um, uh, I graduated. I moved to California with no job, no money. Uh, I slept on my buddy's kitchen floor, um, started testing games, uh, and then eventually I got my first art job at... Maxis on um, the Sims 2 Castaway, which was amazing. Uh, with Joanna. Da Joanna was there too. Yep. Uh, it was uh, wonderful. And I've been at Maxis ever since. Um, uh, I think that The Sims is probably, uh, it is not a game that I play, um, but it's a game that I love to make because it's just so uh, diverse and so interesting and so meaningful uh, to, uh, to me and to the people who play it. Yeah. And I believe, uh, if I recall, you had a much taller mohawk at that point. I did, yeah, yeah. It was, um, uh, it was you know, probably about there. Uh, when I first got hired on uh, uh, Castaway, it was uh, bright green. And standing way up here, and I knew that if I got my job like that, like this place was actually pretty cool. Yeah, to this day, I'm still 100% convinced one of our default Sims is based off of you. It is, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Is, yeah. Every time in Sims 3 and in Sims 4, I put myself in the game. It's incredible. Nice. <laughs> um, Jessica, how about you? Let's see. I mean, um, like many of us, I've played video games all my life. Um, I actually got into video games uh, 
from my dad. My dad used to play a lot of video games on an NES when I was a kid uh, to highlight how old I am. Uh, I, I used to um, like sit in his lap and like uh, we would play like uh, Wizards and Warriors, and I would like I would hit the jump button. He would control the movement of the characters. So like uh, my dad really instilled the, a love of games in me. Like I remember. Uh, he's playing the original, uh, well, I guess Final Fantasy three, but he's playing Final Fantasy at one point, and like he was at work one day, and I jumped on his save file and started grinding Gil for him to get a weapon. So like, yeah, I've always had the a, re a real close relationship with games, uh, and you know, my, my mom on that hand was always like, ah, oh, you can't, can't just play out video games or never turn into anything. And it's like, well, what, what do you think now, mom? Look at me now. <laughs> but um, uh, beyond that, I went to. Um, I went to college for a degree in communications, which, uh, you know, I can try and stretch and make it seem like that's relevant for game design. Uh, I, I think uh, it would be a stretch. Um, I, I will say one of the things that is valuable for a team of game designers is a variety of lived experience. And in that way, having different educational backgrounds is valuable. Uh, but beyond that, um, I don't really have a formal education in games. Uh, that wasn't really a path that was available um, back when I was getting into the industry. Certainly now, uh, I, I would definitely recommend if you're interested in games, the, the schooling programs are really good. I think um, a, a few of uh, a few folks in the chat actually come from a background with formal education in game design. Uh, but yeah, where I got my first uh, my first break is uh, again working on Viva Pinata Party Animals as a as a QA entry position. And then just from there, uh, working my way up um, by taking a very active interest in in how games are made and like what what are system systemic views of like making a player engaged and interested in the game. And then also a lot of mentorship from uh, designers I worked with, taking taking an interest in trying to bring me up to the next level. Um, one of my dearest friends, uh, his name is Sam Byrne, a designer over on. Guild Wars 2 uh, took interest in um, in training me up into how to formally be a game designer. And I ended up making story missions for Guild Wars 2, which uh, when a position opened up, because um, I was still QV at the time, uh, when a position opened up, it's like, Jessica's only making stuff that we're going to ship, so let's give her the game design position. And that's basically how I got my start. All right. And then uh, round out the top row, uh, Joanna, how about you? Yeah, uh, I studied computer science and English in college. I knew that I wanted to make games, but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to contribute to them. Uh, I grew up playing the old Sierra adventure games, and I really like yeah. that kind of game. <laughs> it's, it's nice and simple and doesn't require uh, skill, physical skill. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I got a really good education at the University of Kentucky and at the end of it, I realized that I didn't, I still wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Because um, I saw that the people who were programming were, had a much bigger passion for it than I did. Uh, I could do it, but it wasn't something that super enthused me. So I went over to Indiana University, got a master's degree, and while I was there, I got an internship. So I think for production, um, there definitely is not a specific thing you study to be a producer. Uh, I kind of see it as like in college, if you're going to college, you know, do the thing that excites you, find what, uh, find what you're passionate about and apply yourself so that with rigor, like demonstrate discipline because you definitely need a lot of discipline in game development, no matter what it is that you do. You need attention for detail. You need the ability to work with other people. Um, you do need a certain technical uh, aptitude for pretty much whatever you do. So um, all those things are useful. And I think actually communication is is very, very useful <laughs> across the board. Um, producers in particular, we we tend to bridge the gap between different disciplines. But different disciplines, like you all are talking with each other all the time anyway. So, you know, being able to speak each other's language and see things from each other's point of view is really important. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, before I get to final three here, um, I will say we are at the half hour mark. So I, uh, we have half hour left. I just want to remind everybody that we are raising money for um, UCSF Benioff through Extra Life. So um, take a moment when you guys get a chance, um, go ahead and donate to us, uh, participate in our charity. Um, and now back to the show. <laughs> you like my segue there? All right. I love um, it. It's good. Just butter spoon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all for a good uh, cause. 
Yeah. Um, Maria, how about you? Oops, sorry. Okay. Um, so I studied uh, at school. I, I was planning to be a graphic designer because uh, around where I was lived, uh, where I lived, uh, I never like had good animation schools around. And I thought that, yeah, being some kind of a graphic designer is my only option, but I always want, I always adored animation. I always loved animation since I was a child. I feel like this is <laughs> the yeah favorite uh, words of every animator when they're uh, starting to talk about themselves. Um, but besides animation, I also loved playing games and I think Harry Potter, uh, those old Harry Potter games, they introduced me uh, into this world of gaming and they were like a starting point. So much inspiration. I like realized that when animation can be uh, fused with uh, gaming and when you can like take action and actually like do something by yourself uh, uh, and you can create your own story. This is uh, so powerful and it boosts your creativity. And yeah, back then the games, they were, <laughs> I, I just suddenly realized that back then the games, they were like very like low, mo uh, low poly modeled. So they looked like boxy and not very detailed. And I just realized that my imagination did a great job uh, filling up all of the missing things. And it just, my imagination did all of the work. Uh, and made those characters as realistic as possible. And uh, I think, yeah, that was a very, very powerful thing, which eventually boosted my, boosted my imagination and yeah, helped me to become who I am. And um, yeah, and <laughs> I, I, I guess I, my, what, what do you want to ask? Oh, I was going to say, I, I don't know if you realize, but I don't know which games they were, but we do have a few of those old Harry Potter devs actually on our team. Engineers, designers, yeah, I and know. UI artists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I found out about that, I was super hyped and I'm still, <laughs> I still want to ask for an autograph. <laughs> I still, yeah, want to like get an old copy of all those games and get autographs of all of those devs. I know that Nick Bagley was one of the designers <laughs> on one of the games and uh, we worked together on one of the Sims games. And yeah, literally when I found out, <laughs> I oh, yeah. was so happy. This was, yeah, this was sort of a game, like dream come true <laughs> when all of your you know, childhood inspirations, they suddenly, <laughs> you yeah, suddenly and that find is, yourself uh... around them. And that is where uh, Henford and on Bagley came from in Cottage Living, right? Yes. Uh, Nick Bagley, it's last name. We stole the names of our British devs. I love that. <laughs> I didn't put that together till now. That's great. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, you didn't realize that? I didn't know. That. I love. I'm learning things in this right now, and I didn't know. Yeah. Incredible. Um, yeah, it's my, it's one of those anecdotes. You always hear about the game industry, but it is true. It's a very small industry. Like. Uh, all, most of us know each other in one form or fashion across all the studios. Yes, small world, small animation world. Um, well, uh, continue on. Uh, Catherine, is there anything you'd like to chime in there? Oh, man. Well, I, for as far as education goes, I feel like you can, like, you can go do the four-year degree if you want, um, but as that's super expensive. There are, like, online programs that are, like, even better than a four-year degree would be just because they're so, like, rigid and haven't really developed and kept up with the industry and stuff like that um, that are, like, incredible, um, you know, so, like, if, if you have any questions about, like, specifically, uh, you know, Maybe you're in the industry. I feel like reaching out to somebody in the industry is going to be your best bet about like what steps to take and what, what would be good for your situation. But um, for me, I feel like I didn't even know that I wanted to do animation when I declared an animation. I was just like, wow, I really love 
Tangled and all these movies. And, you know, I played, I have, um, I'm a triplet and then I have another older brother. And so growing up, we were constantly switching the controller when we were playing all these old, like, PS1 games, like The Grinch and Frogger and Spyro and all these games. We were like, it's like, you know, just like the best thing ever. Um, and so uh, once I kind of got to the, you know, picking your your career and I was like oh wait this is a thing I can I can do this this is you know we can make we can make this happen um so I started out in film first and I did um do little and then like some of the Sonic the Hedgehog marketing and then uh I did Bill and Ted 3 face music <laughs> um and then Max has hired me on without with knowing anyone here which I think is a testament to Max's just um not even because uh, a lot of places are they'll hire you on because of who you know and stuff like that but max is really like looks individually at, at candidates and is like you know we want this person and stuff like that which i think is super cool um, go yeah and on that we should probably plug that we are always hiring go check out jobs.ua.com yeah. <laughs> yeah, <come over. laughs> um and uh, to finish off this question uh mariana anything you'd like to add my journey was a little bit of a zigzag because uh i always liked doing creative things growing up like drawing comics like uh, yeah, i always liked playing games but when looking at like studying back home uh doing creative things was not much of an option so my undergrad is actually in economics uh so i joked that the first time i designed a game was in a class of experimental economics. Uh, I was actually testing microeconomic theory, uh, which is kind of weird when I look back. It's like, that was basically designing a game, but it didn't have to be fun, uh, <laughs> basically. Uh, but after I graduated that, I was very like, uh, I don't want to work with that. Uh, and, you know, early 20s, uh, you're pretty lost. Usually, I don't know. Uh, I felt prisoners in the early 20s. Uh, and then I got into grad school for game design in the US. Uh, I managed to get in. I don't know how I got pretty lucky there. Um, and during that grad school program, I got an internship uh, at Maxis uh, for summer. And after that internship, uh, before I graduated, uh, I got hired here. So, and now I'm here. That's that's the whole journey. I think that oh, really? tuning is an element of game design that op people often don't recognize out there. They don't like. They think about how am I gonna, what as a character am I gonna be able to do, and like what stuff am I gonna interact with. But then there's like how the balance of all of the economy, all the numbers, and all the the times and the the things. I I had four semesters of statistics, so now when we do numbers in the game, I'm like, that's easier than, you know, like, semester four of statistics. It's fine. Yeah, so math, I think, is tremendously important. Yeah, depending on the kind of the game designer you want to be. Math yeah. is pretty handy. All right, yeah, I think now I've got a, a number... Oh, sorry, was that Jessica? Oh, I was just going to say, I think a lot of being good game designers, being able to leverage what personal skills you you individually have uh, for the role, because um, such a wide variety of backgrounds. Uh, one of the things um, we we hire for is diversity of thought. So the idea that you can bring some kind of viewpoint that we don't currently have. So things like economic theory, communications theory, computer science background, all those things make a more robust game. All right, so now into some sort of more fun questions. Uh, and I'm going to start this off with Joanna because I know she's already got an answer queued up. But um, I want to ask, uh, what is your favorite item, piece of clothing, or gameplay system that you've either put in or worked on over years on uh, Max's titles? And uh, Joanna, I'm going to start with you because you already sent me an image, and I'm just going to go straight to that now. Yeah, so I in in the roles that I've done as a producer, there isn't much that I've directly designed. Um, this particular thing was a concept that I came up with. Somebody else implemented, but I was super tickled that the idea made it in because all, what I wanted to do was just have a really simple object that you could plop anything on and that thing would be art. You know, most of the time you, you know, 
we have things that are made to be art. But what if you wanted to do something like show off a sink as a piece of art or a toilet as a piece of art? So um, this cube <laughs> it was my idea, and it's just a cube, and you can plop anything onto it. Yeah, I see you chose a golden throne there uh, in the upper left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's nice. It's simple. I think it's really funny and wacky, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's go down the line. Uh, Jessica, how about you? What, can you rephrase that question one more time? Is so, it the first object I've worked on? No, not first. Um, just a favorite item, piece of clothing, gameplay system that you've worked on, or that like you're particularly proud of or you like from the systems. Uh, I mean, I didn't uh, handle the actual building of it or direct design um, uh, of it, but um, actually, let me back up. I think the thing I'm proudest of is actually a sexual orientation feature. Uh, I, I think that's that's a clear winner um, for me. Just um, as a queer person myself, um, it's something near and dear to my heart. I think it's been really meaningful for a lot of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. And it's been really uplifting to see how Maxis came together to really have, to really nail that system and make it very broad and accepting and diverse in terms of the stories that can be told with it. And it's still something that I'm working on and it's something as a company we're very proud of. Um, I think I, I've used this anecdote before, but there's a lot of companies where if we were working on a system like that, the first question would be, well, why are you working on a system like that? But here at Maxis, the first question all the way up to exec level is, how might we do the best version of that? Not, not should we do it, but how do we do a good version of it? And then from that, we got to consultation with GLAD, which is again, Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, and they get better project. And then our internal groups too. So it was a, a very uplifting experience. I think at the end of the day, um, I use this saying to you in interviews. Um, a, a really common story here is um, a young LGBTQIA plus kid seeing themselves reflected for the very first time in media through The Sims. And from that, realizing that who they are is normal and that everything will be okay. And that's that's really powerful to me. So I think like, I've got other f examples that are fun, but I think that's the one I'm certainly proudest of. Yeah. And to be clear, I, I uh, to be clear, I, I worked on a lot of the design of that, but the actual implementation of that uh, went down to uh, Reed Yamamoto, one of our designers, and a lot of our a bunch of our engineers um, like Amy Wu, uh, and a consultation from folks. All it was a massive team effort, so I don't want to take like credit for for the whole thing at all. I'm I'm right there with you, and I would like to um, sort of upvote for you here. Um, go check out on sims4.com the news section. Jessica did a really great article where she goes really in deep uh, on on that whole system, and you can find out so much more on it. It's pretty good. Um, all right, Clint. Um, aprons? <laughs> no, no. So many aprons. I love each and every one. Um, <laughs> my favorite. Uh, it's a toss up between the. Um, the llama corn mascot, which I absolutely adore, and the uh, suit of armor from Get Together. And I think I got to go with the suit of armor. Um, that was a piece that sometimes um, design will come to us and say, uh, we need this thing and we need it like right now and we don't have time to go to concept. Uh, so uh, that's when um, a character artist like me just gets a big smile on their face and goes, oh, yeah, I get to make this whole thing from scratch. Um, so designing uh, clothing that is rigid um, and doesn't, you know, move uh, with the, the rest of the body like our, all the rest of our clothing does, um, hard joints, uh, gauntleted fingers, um, uh, all that stuff was just so much fun. And I had so much um, uh, uh, gothic armor reference saved. Um, I still have a folder. It's huge. Um, the crest on the front of it, uh, um, in almost all of the armor that I had, if there was some big crest on it, there was a lion or some other terrifying creature. And then, so I said, like, this, I need something here, but... Uh, it's the Sims, so I made it a kitten. Um, uh, I cued it up the face, and I made it pawing at the air and stuff. And I, I absolutely loved it. Um, I think that one is my favorite. 
I think we're going to have to add that to one of the builds in the later segments later today. <laughs> yep. Um, cool. um, next up, uh, Mariana. Oh, me. Uh, I think it, I have two answers for that. One, in Cottage Living, I made canning, right? So if you make a uh, cowberry jam and you eat sims it, your sims it is it, they are going to start mowing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just really like that. I just really like to have thought of that and have it in the game and especially to have to explain that to animator exactly what I meant by this thing starts mowing. Um, and the second part of that answer is the accidental death in neighborhood stories, especially the text writing of that. The, the text writing, like when you go like, hey, like neighborhood stories, like tell me what has happened. Uh, I wrote the the text for the accidental deaths, like when someone dies, uh, and that was very fun to write. And I I watched many YouTube videos of people playing with neighborhood stories. Just like I want to see your reaction to the text when someone dies. Yeah, check the I... mailbox for the latest news. <laughs> see Mariana's writing. I really do love that um, in this job, you can go to an animator with a straight face and be like, yeah, so I've got a Mooberries, and so uh, I need you to get uh, the, the Sims to start mooing afterwards and talk to audio with a straight face, and no one no one thinks you're crazy. They're just like, yep, par for the course. This is a Tuesday. Yeah, I had <laughs> to do the mooing. Here, so. I had to do the mooing a meeting. I had, I had to do it. Oh, fantastic. That's incredible. I love it. Yeah. yeah, I think the the range of silliness that we get to enjoy as part of the job is one of the things that makes it so easy to work on for so long. And also getting to nerd out on things like armor or like Castaway. I was so enthusiastic about Castaway because it's like, oh, survival. And now we get to figure out how Sims are going to craft all of these buildings. They're not just going to like plop it down from a from a magical catalog. Like it's so much fun and we get to there's all this diversity of places that our brain gets to inhabit for, uh, you know, really nice chunks of time. That's fantastic. Cool. Um, last two, uh, Catherine. Um, man, I'm so torn um, because uh, I I love really silly, goofy things. Like, uh, I think probably one of my favorite things, and it, it wasn't like long or anything like that, but the chicken running animation was it was probably the favorite thing I did because the the they're so goofy looking you know and so I'm just like what Maria said is you're spending hours looking at reference videos um you know scouring YouTube for you know whatever video you know of you know chickens getting startled and they like disperse because like you know it's hard to find like a specific video of you know like there wasn't a chicken around me like go oh, check out so I like just distinctly remember seeing like their heads like kind of going back and forth and stuff. And like, I just, I loved my job in that moment um, so much, you know, heartwarming. Um, and then I guess as far as like, uh, I guess, I guess if I can split it between two, um, the werewolf pack was uh, just a, such a blast to work. I'm like, I can't, I can't tell you guys are like ex expressing words how amazing that team was to work on because everyone was uh, so invested and and trying to like really stick true to like the wearable floor you know and just being like very authentic to you know the um that occult and uh you know we we did um I, I did like the werewolf transformation animation and then i did some reference video for the bite a sim um and like both of those you know you're kind of like you're really energetic you know obviously i'm like pretending to be in pain and then like on the ground and you know <laughs> And you're sweaty afterwards and then i recruited my uh, my partner to help me shoot reference video for the bite so he's like grabbing onto the meat <laughs> like biting taking turns it's just like super goofy and then you know when you're showing this animation to the other departments um i if i can brag on audios i know that we don't have any audio people here but like oh my god there was one day i i was crying i was laughing so hard because he had taken the the bite animation he's like I want that to be to be juicier. Like I want it to be squishy. And so he had 
he was just like at his home because we're all working remotely, right? So he's like sitting at his home, like in front of a microphone. He had videotaped it and he's like biting into an orange and he slowed it down to like quarter speed. So it's like really low. And I was dying. Like I was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And um, uh, someday I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to share it hopefully with everybody because it's too good. But um, yeah, get into work oh, with I everybody. Had <laughs> I had to meet myself. <laughs> Um, <laughs> how, how about you, Maria? <laughs> yeah, this is such an amazing story. And yeah, Catherine had a lot of passion working on werewolves. Uh, I feel you know, like, yeah, uh, I had a, a, an equal amount of passion <laughs> working on cheerleaders uh, for EP12 because this is, was such a complicated feature to implement and a lot of uh, yeah, crazy moves, uh, which uh, even like the, the most talented athletic animators, unfortunately, they cannot pull it off. <laughs> so yeah, you have to be, you have to get as creative uh, as you can with studying everything you can. But I would say that, uh, yeah, testing uh, and testing cheerleading animations in game was fun, especially with all different types of clothes, because I had to make sure that all types of clothes look good <laughs> on those animations. And uh, I just want to say that the cheerleading outfits, they are amazing and uh, I love how they look like. But yeah, I had to tweak my animation in some parts because <laughs> these short skirts just didn't look good in <laughs> some of the poses. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is this is like this is I guess a good example of how everyone is working together, how like animation is working together with design and uh, yeah, up until uh, you actually load everything into game, you like you can uh, most of the time you predict how it's going to work, but sometimes there are things uh, yeah which are not uh, accounted for so. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes they can look funny. <laughs> sometimes you can just you can just spend uh, a couple of hours trying uh, all of the types of clothes on your sim and making them dancing and changing outfits constantly just to check that all of the outfits look good uh, on all of these dances. So yeah, nice. Um, so now we're sort of coming towards the end. So in the last few minutes, I've got a challenge. I'm going to test your Sims knowledge here. Um, I've got a series of images. And with those images, I've pulled out some of our, uh, some of the mascots that we've created in the game over the years. And I'm going to ask you guys to see if you guys could actually name them without pulling up the game or cheating. Um, and whoever's closest or has the right number, I'm going to donate $10 for every right answer to the streamer of your choice. So with that, let me, and everyone in the chat is welcome to uh, play along. Let's, uh, hopefully this works. All right. Who knows this guy? Wait, where do we see it? Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys aren't watching the stream, are you? Yeah. I can pull it up. Right. Yeah. I, I look at the stream. Yeah. I'll give it a second for you guys to get on the stream. Um, and no looking at chat because they've already got it. Oh no, I I, I can't. I, uh, I okay, I have to hide chat. Oh, okay, well, <clears throat> yeah, I I mean I worked on this pack, so I feel like I'm cheating. <laughs> I, I know the pack cheating. is from. I know the pack it's from. I don't know the name. Oh, okay. Well, who wants to take a guess that's at the the full name of this character? That's an F. That's an F. Yeah, yeah. I I, I know what it is. is it. I don't. Have... Say it. Frank. It's Frank. The, the, the it's Frank. Robot. Frank the Frank White Womp? I, that is correct. I knew the I knew the Womp Womp part. I just didn't know his proper name. Yes, Frank the Flying Womp Womp. Uh, also, Wait, somebody's a, saying uh, Frank the Womp Womp isn't it? Oh, they missed flying. That's okay. I see. Yes, it's Frank the Flying Womp Womp, um, and this is also a reference to one of our team members as well. Wait, who's that? Frank the oh. Flying Womp Womp. <laughs> yeah. Team yeah. You, you haven't met the. the Wait, Frank, I think I've Frank seen Womp Womp, Womp Womp is somebody's name before. I gotta. I haven't met them. I've never met them personally. Yeah, I had a lot of uh, insider jokes. I pulled them back because I wasn't sure who wanted to be on screen. But yes. All right, Jessica, I'll give you that that ten or fifteen dollars. I will follow up after see who you want to donate to. All right, next up. This comes in. 
Who is this uh, fun character from Seasons? Oh, Clint, who is this? That is Shaky the Scarecrow. Shaky the Scarecrow. Any other vote? Uh, any other guesses? Fiddlesticks. No, sorry. Fiddlesticks. It's not fiddlesticks. It's not fiddlesticks. It is actually my video Hatchy is the some straw man. Oh, it's Hatchy. Oh, I'm terrible. I made that too. I should know it. <laughs> But you made it, but you didn't write the um. You didn't write the, the thing the, the for text, him. That's right? true. You had that's your true. own name for him. Yeah. Yeah, my name was Shaky, and yeah. and that's the way who he'll always be to me. It's the true name. <laughs> Someone called out Fiddlesticks is from a different game franchise. <laughs> it's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> All it's right. Really great design, Clint. This is my own personal mascot. Uh, who knows this uh, fabulous chef pig? If you follow my Twitter at all, oh, you know he'll be on there often. I'm not on Twitter, George. Yeah, but George, either way, this should be in all of your builds. <laughs> Anybody know this character? No, this is the Pork Du Jour. Pork Du Jour. Oh, <laughs> that's good. I've heard, I've heard good. You make a reference. That's a before. good one. This, yeah, he holds up all the announcements I put on Twitter. All right, here's a throwback. To outdoor retreat, anybody know this character? I don't, but that's adorable. Clay, no? did you make it? It's very cute. <laughs> Super cute. Very cute. I did not make that one. I yeah. I wish I knew his name. I can't remember it. Yo, uh, someone in chat this... just got really close. Before this anybody panel, know what type of gonna... creature this is? It looks like a reindeer. It's a reindeer, right? Yeah, he's a, ja he's a jackalope, it's I a think. Moose? It's a jackalope. Well, I'll give it's you that. Oh, yeah. okay. This is Ranger Stanley, who appears as a plushie and, um, you know, a larger um, statue at some point. But yeah, I, I, I just need chat to know. I just need chat to know before this panel. George is like, "We're gonna do a quiz. It'll be super easy. Don't worry about it. We'll get all of them." I know the packs usually they're from, but I don't know the player face names. He's my favorite. <laughs> All right, who who knows this fun character from Snowy Escape? Popcorn Scream. Clint? Clint, Jess, or uh, yeah. Joanna? You guys both raised your hands. I see Clint answering, but I don't hear Clint. I had I just had a, a little story about about this guy. Um, he's actually a, a full body uh, costume as well, who wanders around uh, the town. Um, uh, I know his name, but Joanna, go ahead. This is Yamachan, right? Yeah. It is Yamachan. Yamachan. Everyone loves Yamachan. Yeah. I really love I, our mascots. You get, you, you all do such a great job. With him. It's so cute. I know the animations you can do with him, but I don't know the name. I have <laughs> animated <laughs> him, and I didn't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> so good it, her, I'll do that comes hours. in later. Uh, well, the... the Th those were all of my mascots. I just wanted to share and uh, oh. get stories from you guys. So, um, but yeah. Uh, so, thank you for uh, attending that. But um, we've got uh, just a couple minutes left. Um, I'll say that uh, we are going to exit now, and um, Singuru Doi will uh, be taking on another stream after this. But um, I just want to give you guys a, a big thank you. Thank you for joining my stream and all week coming to my meetings and dealing with my late night questions I sent to you. Um, thanks for uh, giving this uh, time on a Saturday morning to this charity and to everyone on Twitch. Uh, the chat's going wild. I think people really have enjoyed this time. Um, so I'll just like pass it around for a quick goodbye and any last note you'd like to say, um, just go for it. Um, Clint, let's start with you and just go through. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for donating. Uh, thank you for playing. Um, you're all wonderful, and and I'm very very happy to be here. Uh, Jessica, you. yeah, I'm about yeah, to sing yeah, a little you. bye bye song for my uh, little kids in swim class. Bye bye, Jessica. Bye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go for it, Jessica. <laughs> uh, just again, thank you. You guys are inspiration. You're the reason why we do this and uh, your your excitement and uh, your delight brings us to light. So again, thank you for being fans. Thank you for sticking with us and uh, hopefully you enjoy everything else we do in the future. Yeah. Uh, Joanna? 
Yeah, I very much appreciate all the players out there. We love the the creativity and the imagination that you bring to our game. And thanks for sharing it with us, and thanks for playing. And please donate. It's to a good cause. We're helping out kids who are sick and need help. Uh, Maria? Yeah, thank you, everyone, for coming. And thank you for donating. And thank you for playing The Sims. Yeah. Just thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your support. Uh, Catherine? Um, yeah, thank you guys. I mean, I repeated what everyone's saying, but um, yeah, yeah I, I can't wait till next year to to talk even more about, you know, everything. And then we're going to have new stuff too. So it's going to be so much fun. And yeah, donate if you guys can, please. Thank you so much. It's going to be great hanging out with all, all of you guys today on a Saturday. Uh, and Mariana? Thank you very much, both for watching this and donating, but also for playing the game. There's no bigger joy, I, I think, on Game Dev's life when you make something and people enjoy it, like from the bottom of the heart. All right. Well, uh, again, thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day and everything we have going for you. Um, I see I outed my swim school to a few of the other sin gurus. But um, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. If you're ever interested about seeing these panels, we do archive them here. So you can probably see them um, in the Twitch reruns and I think on uh, my channel as well. But yeah, um, have a good day. <laughs>